Michael Scott is on a date. <laughs> and that, that, my friend, changes no. everything. Uh, oh. <laughs> no, dude. Date Mike. Nice to meet me. I love The Office. I know you love The Office. Today it's gonna be on Michael Scott. Hopefully I'm gonna turn this into a series if this video gets, let's say 5,000 likes, I will do a part two, maybe on Jim and Pam, maybe on Dwight and Angela. Hi. Hello. Hello. How are you? Come on in. Good to see right. you. Chilly, huh? Oh, I'm so Good glad we finally, uh, finally got okay. to do this, this with you great. guys. It's great. Yeah. You want to uh, you want to take their coats, baby? Yes, I would. Okay. All right. So, what have you been doing? Let's see. Since I saw you an hour ago, <laughs> yeah, I have been getting ready and then driving over here. Well, so. we've been doing pretty much the same thing. Really? <laughs> Except driving. <laughs> we, oh. yeah. we got you this. Oh, well, oh, Pam, thank you. Thanks. Man, I, I want to like build into this. I, I, I know what I want to talk about. I've been wanting to cover this for a really long time, but let me just give you little bits and pieces as we go. Uh, Michael's feeling uncomfortable because he doesn't really have anybody that actually likes him or that he could relate to based on who he is. Let's just go from there. And yeah. Cook with. Mm, really? We'll have a seat or come on in or I don't know. Make yourself to home. This is our casa. <laughs> really it's nice. Great. So really? what do you guys think? Should we do the tour first? Should we have appetizers first? Tour. Let's do the tour first. Okay. 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 Uh, you have a preference, babe? Up you know, it's so funny because I would watch this and most people I think when they watch The Office, just like me, it's like right before I'm going to sleep, I'm relaxing. So I'm not really watching every little facial expression as closely as I am right now. And uh, Michael, I could tell he's anxious right now. He's uncomfortable. Uh, he doesn't even really like his lifestyle that he's living at the moment. So sorry about this god awful carpet. We are still a work in progress here. Well, that's so, this is my office. Yep, never been used. Not super exciting. No. And this is my workspace. This is it. Check that out. You smell it? Uh-huh. As you can smell, there's a lot of different odors going on in here. So you have an office and a workspace. I do. You know, I just, I cannot create in the same space that I conduct business. I'm sure that you're the same with your doodles. Smell. It's fire. Uh-huh, bonfire. Actually. Bond. Men love this one. James Bonfire. Yeah. <laughs> I am Bonfire. James Bonfire. Michael Scott. <sighs> when I get frustrated or irritated or angry, I come up here and I just smell all my candles. And it just poof, goes away. Just like that. Just like that. I could just see from the way Michael's acting. He is living a life that he doesn't want right now. This is a life that he fantasizes about, a life that he wishes actually was the way he wanted it to be. I think he wants love so, so, so badly that he's willing to get into a relationship with somebody that he doesn't even care about that much just to feel like he is in that kind of marriage thing, that family thing. He wants it so bad that he'll do whatever he can, even settle for somebody that he doesn't really care that much about. And in retrospect, watching his facial expressions right here, uh, that's all this is telling me. I think this episode is like a really sad example of the way a lot of relationships are. People aren't really that happy with each other. They're in a relationship because they are. There was nothing else to do. So they got married, they got a place, and they're living with each other. And, oh well, it's going. What a cute bench. Thanks, that's my bed. Jen has uh, some space <laughs> issues, so I curl up on that puppy. Really? Because. Seems pretty narrow and yeah. short. It's actually a lot bigger than it seems. Look at this. Ah. See? He fits perfectly. <laughs> oh my God. Sometimes I will just stand here and watch television for hours. I love it. I love this TV. Oh, and I also built this table. They are just so amazing at conveying such strain on the relationship right underneath this very thin lacquer of acting like they're in some sort of relationship. 
What is that, chestnut? No, I think that is either pine or Nordic cherry. It's pine, yeah. Michael, I'm just terrible at all this stuff, so uh, it's really cool. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he tried to set up my TiVo for me, but then I didn't have audio for a week. <laughs> if you ever need any help, I am just a phone call away. I bet you are. Well, I saw... Oh, your Dundies. I'm surprised they're not out on the coffee table for everybody to see. Well, it was between the uh, neon beer sign and the Dundies. So I said, honey, keep the trophies. Oh. So I think this episode is a great example of what many, many, many people experience in their lives, uh, which is a relationship where they don't really relate that much with the person they're in a relationship with. They don't have that strong a chemistry. And a lot of it is attributed to the fact that they got into a relationship for the wrong reasons. Maybe because they found that person to be what society deemed as attractive. And maybe that was just a main contributing factor. But the number one thing that is important in any relationship is the chemistry how when you guys interact, it is so incredibly easy. Where everything the other person says is almost a perfect response to what you said. And you responding to them is always so natural and, and there's no thought involved. And this is something that, you know, I've said before and people in the comments have said, no, I don't believe in it. In a true relationship where two people are both really healthy and truly in love with each other, there's very, very rarely any fighting, almost never. There shouldn't be. Fighting is a product of two people that are not emotionally healthy and also don't truly respect and love each other. If you love that person, you would never talk down to them. You would never insult them. You would never get angry at them and lash out at them. That doesn't to say that you would get, you wouldn't get angry. It means that you would not lash out at them. I take relationships really seriously. I don't think anybody should get into a relationship unless they know that relationship will be amazing. I don't think there's any rush to get into a relationship. I think way too many people rush to get into a relationship. I think way too many people focus their happiness on being in a relationship when it's completely unnecessary. I do not think that a human being needs to be in a long-term committed relationship in their life if it doesn't happen. That's what makes a relationship so special. That's why I think marriages were so celebratory in the way that they were, in the way that they are today too. It started off because it's like, whoa, these people really, really like each other. They really, really want to be with each other. They're really, they're so good together that they want to literally spend the rest of their lives together. That's crazy. Let's celebrate that. Now, it just seems like a custom to kind of cover up maybe a lack of chemistry. Who knows? Anyway, let's move on to the next episode. This just keeps going on. It's hilarious, but I really want to teach stuff here as well as, you know, we have a little bit of laughs, but honestly, I just, I want to hopefully get you to see relationships in a different way, in the way that you approach relationships. I want to get you to see them differently. Just worried about the farm, you know? Moe's hates to geld the horses by Dwight, himself. Dwight, shut up about the farm. It's not relatable. Nobody owns a farm. Wait, you're worried about your horses? That's cool. Well, how many horses do you have? Nine and three quarters. <laughs> I invented a device called Burger on the Go. It allows you to obtain six regular sized hamburgers or 12 sliders from a horse without killing the animal. Right there was an example of how most men see meeting people. This is how most people see meeting people. It doesn't matter if you're a man. They think there is some script. They think there is some coolness thing you need to achieve in order to get somebody attracted to you, especially at a place like a bar or something like that. Why? Because movies, TV tells you so. Why? Also, because when you go to a loud sports bar or something like that, and people are acting a certain way, you go, oh, I need to act that way too, because they're having success. When in reality, you're just watching the outgoing people, the extroverts that are 
more easy to notice meeting people. But guess what? They're more likely to meet those people. The people that you are gonna meet may be in a different place in that bar. They may be in a different bar entirely. But this was a beautiful example of showing how when you are so fucking specific to who you are, there is literally no filter. Yes, you are going to turn off many people. That's the point. Because when you turn off all those people, the people that are truly interested in you, they're gonna see you much more easily. Michael, because he's probably friends with that freaking traveling salesman douchebag, has been taught to play the cool character. He's been taught that women he's attracted to just react to certain things, certain cues, certain actions, certain words that a man might say. And because of that, his social skills level actually goes way, way down. He becomes oversimplified. He becomes basic. He becomes watered down. Whereas Dwight, <laughs> he attracts a lot of women actually. Um, and it's because he's the opposite of watered down. He's not focused whatsoever on coming off attractive. So he's not trying to emulate anything. He is being so freaking himself that those people are kind of almost <laughs> shook by how strong his reality is, by who he is, how he values who he is so strongly. Hey, hi. Do you, would you have a snack in your purse? Your mom, I just figured you might have. Uh, yeah. Oh. Ooh, apricot. <laughs> Do you have any of the very berry or ocean splash? Or? No. Oh. No. Okay. Were you saving it? Oh, no, no, that's, that's okay. I'm just, uh, I've had a very rough weekend. No, oh, I'm sorry. Well, uh, apricot made of real apes. My weekend was bad so far. Oh. I came here hoping to meet somebody. You know, as you do at weddings, end up going to sleep by the vending machine. It was loud over the warm. Oh, that sounds awful. And, and the love of my life is dating somebody else. Um, it's just, it is a terrible year for love. Yeah, guess it is. Thinking about having my sperm frozen. So, the funny thing about this scene, this, this is the the funniest thing about Michael Scott is the second he turns off any type of acting and this character that he usually plays is date Michael, where he acts as cool as possible, putting on the moves. This is when date Michael is turned off. He's literally, he, he, he has no interest in Pam's mom whatsoever. So he's being completely vulnerable. He's talking exactly about how he feels. Things that he would otherwise never say to a woman that he had intentions of going on a date with. And what he just did is he basically unlocked an interest in Pam's mom. However bad this situation is, if we, if we detach from the actual context of the interaction itself and just look at what's happening. And I'll bet you there's been moments in your life where for some reason, date you was turned off. You stopped trying to be cool. You stopped trying to impress that person. You just weren't even thinking about it. And suddenly you find yourself in a dynamic where this person's really interested in you. And I'll bet you as soon as you noticed that was happening, you went back to turn on date you and tried to put on the moves, put on the cool personality, try to be attractive to that person, which in turn made them unattracted. I know I used to do that. I used to do that early in my life. In my teens, when I was in college, I wasn't trying to attract anybody. I would get somebody liking me that I thought was really attractive. And as soon as they started liking me, I was like, all right, now I actually have to keep this going. What do I do? That's when they lost interest in me. So interesting, right? So a lot of these things that are happening, I learned in my own self and I said, wait a second, how can I access, how could I harness that part of me where I'm not trying to attract somebody 
And that's what I set out to do for all my life. And that's how I was able to teach it to so many people and get people to be exactly who they are, despite turning off however many people, because we know in the end, that's actually opening the way for people that are truly attracted to who you are, not them, not them, you, how to get those people noticing you, seeing you, and moving towards you. Hey, Michael. Yes. This is my friend, Julie. Hello, hi. how are you? Had hi. What is a nice girl like you hanging out with these bums for? <laughs> there you go. Julie laughs at everything. So you work with Pam and Jim? Oh, no, no. Pam and Jim work for me, and if they win, they are fired. <laughs> I should hope not. What do you do? I am an ESL teacher. Really? Yeah. See, I didn't think you could teach that. I thought that was something you were born with. What am I thinking right now? Are you thinking that I said ESP? Yes. Yeah. Ah, I feel like an idiot. <laughs> awesome. I was a little nervous when Pam told me he was her boss, but he... So Michael never gets vulnerable with people like he did right there. And again, why did he do that? Because he wasn't trying to put on the moves with this woman. He wasn't trying to flirt with her. He wasn't trying to attract her. Michael thinks that attracting somebody is about being this big, crazy person. Uh, charismatic, basically. Uh, attraction really has nothing to do with charisma just doesn't. Charisma has a lot to do with maybe being a leader, but when it comes to having attraction for somebody, making a connection with somebody, it's all in the small things. Getting vulnerable is one of them. You noticed that she started feeling a lot more comfortable with him when he got vulnerable. What does vulnerable mean? I talk a lot about it on the channel. It's when you say something that could potentially put you up for judgment by that person. Getting vulnerable is a confident trait because it shows that you don't care what that person thinks of what you're saying. Most people, especially men, they try to throw away any vulnerabilities and only try to put on a sense of strength. They think that shows confidence. But a person that is only showing their strength means that they're on the defense at all times. Confident people are hardly ever on the defense. They're always vulnerable because they're not scared of anybody attacking or judging them. So what do you think? About what? About Julie. She seems nice. Yeah, yeah. So you like her? Uh, yeah, sure. See, he doesn't even notice. He has not one focus on her because he was never set up to do so. So Pam was right. About what? About you two hitting it up. It just happened in his head. Right there. Right, <laughs> right. Oh, this is a date now? Oh, what? Wait a second. I gotta catch up on being date Michael. Well, Fucking apparently, asshole. Michael Scott is on a date, <laughs> and that, that, my friend, changes no. everything. No. <laughs> no, dude, with the tongue. Oh, oh no, the walk yeah, even. Oh, no. Oh, boy. Oh. Hey, Michael, where have you been? <laughs> oh, God, he always hit her in the hey, fucking face. white ball first, buddy. Oh, you can see how anxious he is also. <sighs> He's on a performance right now. He thinks that attraction is about performance. The beautiful thing about The Office is it amplifies the human experience so well. And honestly, there's a little Michael Scott in all of us. There's a little bit of that need to have people admire us, to have people love us from down below. It's all based in insecurity. And Michael Scott is basically a walking manifestation of insecurity and a need to impress people to satiate that insecurity. Hey! Nice one. Can I talk to you for a second? Mm-hmm. Nice one. Everything okay? Why are you wearing a hat now? Guys, come on. I'm on a date. Let me do my thing. Hi, I'm Date Mike. Nice no. to meet me. No. How do you like your eggs in the morning? No. 
Hey guys, guys, guys. Use a boy. Watch this. Ready? See, a performance. He thinks what that attraction doing? is about I'm performance. I'm trying to not understand with my tongue. Michael, you don't have to do this. <coughs> wow. <laughs> oh, wow, that was close. I would say I kind of have an unfair advantage because I watch reality dating shows mm -hmm. like Hawk and mm -hmm. I learn. The funny thing about this is a lot of people watch reality dating shows. Again, he is an amplification of the human experience. So reality dating shows, whatever it is, movies, we are affected by what we see in pop culture. However, the people writing that, they don't really know what attraction looks like. And honestly, it's not that fun to watch. Two people that really like each other just getting along Honestly, it's not that exciting. It's the way it was when you first saw Michael interacting with Pam's friend. It was kind of nothing. They were just having a good time. It is most exciting to see people that have basically no values whatsoever and they're all focused on vanity and it's vanity versus vanity. And that's fun. That's why that's on reality TV. That's why that's in movies. Again, he is that little side of us that believes that vanity is what makes people attracted to us. And we could laugh at it because we all have a little bit of ourselves that feel the same way. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. You want to pay 400 bucks to refill this table? Yeah, why don't you send the bill to 23 I don't care Lane, oh. Scranton, Pennsylvania. Hey, Michael, why don't you just get down? Hey, she can tell I'm on a date, right? Right? We're just having Fuck. fun. Dad, we have Huh? Really? <laughs> you told on me. That's lame. We got a problem? Yes. Homelessness? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Whoa. I'm just kidding around. I'm sorry. She can't talk to us that way. You guys are stripes, I think. You let somebody talk to you like that. Michael believes so much. He is so convinced that this is the way that he never gives it up. Even when the entire room is saying, Stop it, dude, fuck it, it's bad, stop. He's still so blind because of that addiction, that need to be liked. You embarrass my friends in front of me and I'm gonna need you to go back over to the table and apologize. Then I am sorry that I didn't kick you out. I'm here with my employees. I am here on a date. Hello? Well, uh, I'm the manager here, sir. Well, it just so happens that I'm a manager too. And the way I manage people, is that I touch their hearts and souls with humor, with love, and maybe a dash of razzle-dazzle. And I don't see that from you. Is that how you do it? Yes, it is. I am writing a book about it. Really? How much? So right at this point, it's kind of funny because Michael did step out of the performance. He truly thought she was in the wrong. So in confronting her, his real side actually began to come out, regardless of how crappy that real side is right now. But it is that authenticity that eventually gets the manager to become interested in him. Hey, how much have you written? I've written all of it. In my head. If you're really interested, it is called Somehow I Manage, and there's going to be a picture of me on the cover shrugging with my sleeves rolled up. Again, He's not trying to impress her. He's not trying to attract her. It's not even on his mind. He wasn't even considering that this manager that wanted to kick him out could possibly be interested in him. So, even though maybe he's already freaking amped up from that big performance that he just did, he's once again not even thinking about trying to impress this woman, which, oh, guess what? is exactly what happens anyway. Have you read Lee Iacocca's? It's classic. Read it, I own it. But no, I have not read it. Dude, tonight, you're not gonna wanna put it down. It's gonna make you wanna go out and buy a Chrysler tomorrow. I own a Chrysler. Shut up. No, you shut up. Again, he had no idea that she was even flirting with him right there. He was just simply having an interaction with somebody. And because he was acting in, he was acting authentic, he was being true to actually who he is because he wasn't thinking. Being real, being yourself has nothing to do with thinking, trying to be yourself. It's actually the opposite. Being yourself has to do with shedding all thought and just 
I guess there's no other word than being. Uh, when that happens is when she starts actually interacting, engaging with him. What's your drink? Grenadine. <laughs> what? I manage a paper company, Dunder Mifflin Sabre. You have a card? I did, I actually put it in your bowl. Stanley Hudson? No, no. Whoa, a lot of Stanley Hudson's in here. No, it's Michael Scott. Michael Scott? He is I. You just won yourself a lunch. Oh, hey guys. Michael doesn't know that there's chemistry going on right now. It's not even his focus. He's so just being Michael right now, he's lost. This is the complexity of Michael Scott. Hey, Julie, you having fun? So, yep. when are you coming in for that free lunch? You're gonna wanna come in on a day that I'm working. Uh... So he's just realizing right now what the hell just happened? He realized he just threw a good girl away because of the dumb shit that he was doing. Maybe I can hear more about that book too. <laughs> but a new opportunity arises and why the hell not? Oh, what a great night. Got to hang out with my peeps. Sort of did okay with a, a new young lady. Actually you didn't. Not at all. I think I did, but I can't take all the credit. Some of the credit is due, in fact, to my good friend, oh. Date Mike. Nice to meet me. Oh. Oh. Hey, Michael. Oh, hey, do you still work here? I'd like to introduce you to my replacement. Nah. Come on now. I think I will pass. Michael Scott, this is Holly. Hi. Hi, yeah, right. Okay, well, they hired a female Toby. Good for the world. Thank you, God, for creating two of you. Here's how things work here. My job is to make the office fun. Your job is to make the office lame. And we have an eternal struggle, you and I. And only one of us can be the winner. Spoiler alert, I'm gonna win. Man, someone doesn't like HR. Yeah. What did you do to him? Nothing. To, no, he tortured me with his awfulness. Yeah, I know what you mean. I nearly fell asleep when he gave me a tour of the files. He's right now realizing, wait, who, who is this woman? What, what's, what's going on? His brain is starting to short circuit. Um, well, look, I'll let you get back to work, but I, I really look forward to working with you, Mr. Scott. Mm -hmm. You can pop, Michael. <laughs> you know, if we hung Holly from the ceiling, we'd have to kiss underneath of her. <laughs> so, I <laughs> know. Oh, sorry. Question, are you real or are you a hologram? Uh, <laughs> nice, I've never heard that one before I actually. Bet. That's good. I bet. Are these guys boring your ear soft? Um, no, no. I, I... Oh. What, um, what is your community like? How long does it take to get in? Oh, uh, you know, I should make you a mix. Do you have a, a CD player? So if you notice right now, Michael is not doing date Mike right now. He's not trying to put on the moves, trying to impress her, trying to be a huge entertainer. He is showing his interest in her more than just being a colleague. He is treating her like a friend right from the start. Damn it. Hello, Holly. Whoa, what are you doing? You don't, uh... You don't have to do that. I mean, we have already put together chairs. That's how we buy them, actually. Oh, I'm trying to adjust the lumbar support on Toby's chair, and that made this up-down lever thing not work, and then I took the whole chair apart, and that is the story of me on the floor. It's pretty good, right? I'm gonna sell the movie rights. And the sequel, woman stands at desk and works. So already, their chemistry just naturally clicks. So Holly was being her natural charming self and because Michael and Holly just go together, Michael didn't have to think about impressing her with something funny. His natural <laughs> talent <laughs> for improv just came through right there. And it's funny, if you've seen any of the episodes where Michael is at improv class, 
He's the exact opposite of this. He's trying, he's acting, he's performing, when improv is all about the opposite of that. Improv is about just being you and reacting to the moment without trying to come up with something interesting. In fact, the godfather of improv, and I've read, I've read two of his books, he says, be obvious, be boring, be normal. Because it's when you do those things is when your natural inclinations for what you truly find interesting or funny actually come out. It's when your unique, authentic, real side comes out. And guess what? Somebody that's never met you before, you are a completely new creature to them. So anything that you say that's obvious, normal, or what you think could be even boring is the exact thing that is interesting and funny. Think of every unique person that you know. Are those people trying to do something outside of who they really are? Or are they acting in such harmony with who they truly are that that completely unique, different side of them comes out? I have no idea how you, how you sit like that. Yoga. Sit on floor and put together a chair, we will. Yo, duh. Um. Pass curvy metal piece, you will. Oh my God. And the face right there, his face right there, baby. He made his joke, there was a silence. And he goes, uh. Because before, he noticed her sense of humor. And he goes, that's the exact sense of humor that I like. So when he made that joke about Yoda right there and there was a silence, he goes, ugh, maybe she really doesn't share that same sense of humor that I do. And then as soon as she responded in such accordance <laughs> with his sense of humor, that face emerges, which is, holy shit. So are you in town this weekend? Cause I'm not, I'm not. Every time I see a situation, I like to take it out of the context in which it exists. This being a place of work, I wouldn't recommend asking somebody out so soon, especially your HR rep. However, if we kind of remove this and put this in mostly any other environment scenario, what Michael's doing right here is great. He met somebody. He noticed she had the same kind of style of sense of humor, personality that he did. He kind of continued with that and he started expressing his unique self to her. He got vulnerable about it. He showed his weird personality in a way that he was not trying to impress or perform, but actually engage and connect. When he did that and he saw that she reacted positively in a way that works in improv where he does something, she says yes, and I'm gonna add to that. When you see that, that's usually a sign that this person has chemistry with you, right? If that happens and you feel attracted to that person, express it immediately. I don't want you to hold back. Again, not in a workplace, that's a little bit different. We could talk about that some other time, but in any other situation, express your attraction immediately, express your elevated interest in the person immediately. You could do so the same way that Michael did by inviting her to escalate the friendship or whatever relationship they have right there to something more intimate. That doesn't have to be a date. That could even just be a regular friendship. Hey, let's go do something together. I'm not gonna be in town. Uh going out of town. Oh, so you can't make my orgy? Kidding. <laughs> His mind is, that's like, that's like the mind blown emoji. <laughs> he cannot believe how close in chemistry these two people are. <laughs> kidding. Acting! <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Oh my god. I did it. 
What'd you do? I talked to her. Holly? <clears throat> Just pleasantries, nothing, you know, not like. Do you want kids or religion or what side of the bed do you want? Hey, I can take either side of the bed at this point. Wow. Okay, so how'd that feel? It was hard. I yeah. wanted to kiss her. Oh, I'm so glad you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Lay in a base. Lay in a base. There you go. Now, Jim's advice to him is correct. Obviously, you don't want to move on so, so fast. You don't want to tell the person that you want to get married and get into a relationship so, so quickly. But at the same time, Jim is on the completely other side of the spectrum where he waits for years before anything starts. So, I mean, I think they have a good balance with each other where he reigns Michael in just a little bit. But at the same time, I do believe that Michael is going about it in the right way way and we find that it actually does work out for him hey. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay by the way this is the face of a person that meets somebody that he has such chemistry with where he actually really likes the person now compare that all the way back to the beginning with jan that was not a relationship where he actually liked her he may have, at the beginning may have been infatuated with her, interested in her from a level of objectification. However, not real chemistry involved. Here, this is a person that realizes true chemistry that he has with another person. This, when you feel this, ooh, this is beautiful right here. It is all about, now I'm gonna tell you this, you gotta remember this guys. Dating, relationships in any capacity is not about being as attractive as possible to the largest set of people. That is a wrong way of going about it. In fact, I would like you to be so authentically yourself that you disappoint, I don't know, 90% of the people that you meet. You're supposed to. That's how this works. This is how it gets efficient. It's how you get from A to B so much more quickly because you are getting all of the wrong people out of the way much more quickly. What most people do is they go, I can't deal with all these people not liking me. So they never even actually get to the person that they connect with because they're so sick of that person not liking them that they just say, fuck it. I'm just gonna act like the person that this person wants me to be. And then they end up in the wrong relationship. The way you have to think about it is not thinking of these things as rejections, but as actually filtering, a filtering process of getting the wrong people out of the way so you could actually more efficiently and more quickly get to the right person. This is a whole lifestyle and headset change, headset, mindset change. Michael's not very good at it. That's why we see most of the seasons of this show. He goes through so many women that he doesn't even actually care about. The beauty of this series is that he happens upon randomly, like a needle in a haystack, somebody that he does have perfect chemistry with. He doesn't do it in an efficient way, but he luckily does find the right person. Uh, it's not in the way that I would have him do it, but nevertheless, he did end up here. And that's why this show is so nice because, oh, the right thing will happen to you eventually. I don't believe that. I believe if you truly want to meet the right person, you better get efficient at the way you make relationships, right? And that is a, in a very, very basic level before we get complex, before we get deeper, is getting the wrong people out of the way and actively finding only the right people. Holly is sweet and simple, like a lady baker. I would not be surprised to find out that she had worked in a bakery before coming here. She's that kind of warmth. That's true appreciation. That's true care. That's true love that you're seeing in his eyes. And again, this is why Michael Scott, uh, Steve Carell, played his character so well because the acting really is incredible. That was a pretty good company, but I just couldn't see a future there. They kept hiring from the outside. It was easy to get in, but impossible to rise up. That's what she, a lot of places are like that. <laughs> the funny thing is, I think if he said that's what she said, she actually would have reacted positively. It's obvious that Holly has that sense of humor already, so I didn't think that was necessary. Michael, thank you so much for saying that. I feel so welcome here. Yeah, I just... um, 
Excuse me. Did you see that? Did you see it? Did you see what? Wow, we. Ah, well, Jan didn't believe in showing affection, so. Sometimes I don't know how to react when a girl touches me. Oh, I like it. <laughs> Again, that's the face of somebody that finds true chemistry with somebody. Poor Michael. I mean, I actually think his whole asshole side of his personality was amplified simply because he didn't get any love in his life. And, you know, if you watch this show, you see how he eventually becomes more of a selfless, loving person because he finds that love. Somehow, after all those ribs, I'm still really hungry. Um, I was thinking of maybe going off campus somewhere and getting some dessert. Or... Oh, um, well, you know what? You should go to the Glider Diner. Ask Stanley about that. He practically lives there. Okay. I'll go to the diner with you. Oh, that would be great. Now the interesting thing about this situation here is Michael's need to have a family is so, so strong in him that he's able to turn off his interest in somebody that is literally perfect for him. Ironic and why, again, the show is amazing. As I said, I'd love to do more of these. I'd love to cover Jim and Pam. I'd love to cover Dwight and Angela. I'd love to cover Andy and Erin, Erin, and whatever other office romances are going on in this series. Put it in the comments if you have any other suggestions. Maybe Phyllis and Bob Vance. <laughs> this channel here is about getting you into the relationships that you really want to be in as fast as possible. I'm not here to get you to challenge yourself to go into the hardest situations possible to somehow attract people that you're not even interested in just as a way to play a game to validate your ego. That's not why we're here. I want you to get into the relationships that you actually want to be in. And again, relationships. That doesn't mean long-term, could mean that long-term, it means in whatever capacity. The difference between a relationship and a vanity thing is it's two people that actually like each other. It's two people that are actually attracted to each other as opposed to connecting on vanity. You can't even really call it a connection. Two people that are not attracted to each other, that have no interest in each other. And the only reason they're there is to merely validate each other's ego. They objectify the other person. They have no interest in the other person, really. That provides no happiness in life. If you like this video, subscribe, get it to 5,000 likes, and I will do a part two. We'll hold some votes on which part two that might be. You can join the Discord. I promise you in the Discord, first of all, Discord is a, basically like a super duper chat room. It is an example of the exact philosophies that I teach right now here guaranteed if you go in there looking to make friends with people you will find amazing relationships everybody in there can attest to how great it is how amazing the people are how warm it is how fun it is so the link is in the description for the discord and if you want to watch another video you can click right here